Hello everybody, Slambo here. I think I have finished my Steadicam. I'm going to walk through the second part of it. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, I have done a part one of how I made the handle assembly with the Ofna U-joint and a uh, dual bearing system in, in there. Uh, and that's as far as I got with that one. So I have finished the rest. Trying to balance this thing, I've really learned a lot on how this how it works and how to balance it. What are the important key features? And I'll walk through that a little bit uh, a little bit later. First of all, the first thing I want to talk about that was made on this would be the base plate. And I should have a picture in the upper right corner showing the actual design of the base plate. This was designed by a friend of mine, Kip Carver, at the Reality Shop. Uh, I pretty much just told him what features I needed in the base plate, what it needed to do, what I was going to put in it, um, and he came up with the design and the concept of, of how to make it. Um, made a uh, housing here to accept the bearing that I bought, and this was designed, you know, everything was custom designed to whatever size we specified it to be. Um, basic plate here, a little bend in it to accept the upper spar, Put a couple grooves around the bearing housing here that you can see in the same spot in the drawing uh, to uh, hold a couple O-rings here for grip for panning purposes. Um, add a little shelf back here. This is one of the last things we added to put a bubble level on it. Very important feature to have a, a level of some, por some sort on your uh, steady cam. I like the bubble level because that gives me the front to back and the left to right balancing feature. Um, probably the left and right is the most important, but uh, just everything about being zero bubble on this seems to be so important. I wanted to be able to adjust the, the front to back to adjust the weight on this side of the pivot point, front to back, and also to left and right to balance it out. And if you look on the drawing, you'll notice that there's two plates that have a slot in it. And Mr. Carver came up with the idea that the sloped edges of the plates when put in the hole of the base plate, when you put the two together and then compress them to tighten it all down, you then render the plate immovable. It compresses against each other itself and it's it's gapped so well that you know it, it becomes tight around the base plate unit itself. So this allows me to within a certain circle I can adjust left and right and front to back. Works incredibly well. It was a great design. It makes it very, very clean. It's just a little spinning disc, you know, it takes a while. You, just the slightest little adjustment left to right or front to back makes it great, greatly affects the, the final balance of this system. And like I said, I'll talk to you about how, what are the important parts to getting the zero bubble in this. For the arm part, I used a boom mic stand. I did at one point have designs on using conduit PVC, way too flexible. I was going to do uh, buy some aluminum tubing at a hardware store, some uh, some extend you know paint extender pole, you know fill it with sand, bend it. Um, no matter what I did, I wanted the the ability to be able to adjust my arc length here. That was also one of the nice features of the the Merlin system. To adjust your arc length and what that does for you is the shorter the arc length the less bottom heavy it is the taller the larger the arc length the more bottom heavy it will become having this joint here to adjust my arm arc distance I thought was very important what I was going to do is we we're just going to make a plastic piece with some teeth in it and clamp it down and I could adjust it that way I came home one day I saw a boom mic stand sitting in the corner of my living room and I just totally forgot about it and all of a sudden I looked at it and realized this joint for the boom mic stand was perfect. This is the actual part that holds the mic that would run through. This is the tail end of it and this is the part that would run down to go into the actual tripod stand of the boom mic stand. But So I sacrificed the boom mic stand to make this but it works perfectly. I just cut the arms, put them in a bender, and, uh, and 
bam, there you go. I, I've got uh, I've, I've got the arms I needed. Puts a, a hole in the end just to, uh, to to put my tail weights into. Um, as far as how to mount the camera, as I said, we have the little slot in there where I can move it front to back. I actually rigged a tripod of mine because I wanted to be able to use the dovetail adapter that came with my tripod and leave it on my camera and then just take it from the steady cam to the tripod, steady cam tripod, whatever I needed. As it turned out, I needed one other uh, piece from the tripod to really make this thing work. We were going to make this part two, but I went ahead and took this off the tripod. And so I, I don't have that flexibility of the back and forth like I, I planned on having. I went ahead and just bought a new tripod. I'll still have to change out my base plate when I want to move back and forth from one to the other, but it makes it easy to take the camera off of this thing without unscrewing anything. It's just a quick release lever. I took this off the top of the tripod, that I, my older tripod that I had, and just ground it down so it was nice and flat and uh, that gives me the quick release of removing the camera from it without having to mess with screwing and stuff and which would eventually alter the balance of it too and once I get this thing dialed in I don't want to do anything to alter the balance of it. I do have some ideas of how we're going to make another base plate so where I can do some fine-tune adjustments. Either way around I'm very happy with this I will post some footage of of how it works I have been able to achieve the, the one second drop test on it. I can get it to where I can move it front to back, left to right, laterally, longitudinally, and it, it, it doesn't pendulum whatsoever. So I'm extremely happy with the way this turned out and uh, I, I still give a lot of credit to the other guys that I've seen online with their designs and I do owe a great amount of thanks to Kip Carver at the Reality Shop for custom designing this base plate. And again, I will post a link on this video in the description with the parts that I used on this design uh, to his website. So if anybody ever wants to contact him to have him make their own base plate, uh, it's, uh, I'm sure he'd talk to you. So uh, it's, uh, it was fun making it. I'm glad I, uh, I'm glad I made it. It was a long, uh, long process, but uh, it does work very, very well. Thanks for watching.